Castle Chef Janie Pendleton, and today we're going to be canning meatloaf. Now I know some of you are going, oh, I don't like meatloaf. I promise you, you're going to like my meatloaf, okay? You're going to love it. And you think about, oh, canning it, oh my gosh, no. I tweaked it a little bit. Of course, because I'm a chef, you got to tweak it a little bit. So, um, do you want to fill the jars to right here? Because we're going to leave plenty of room so the beet's going to shrink, but the grease the is going to rot. The new uh, so, jars, I love these. And you want to can these up to the quart jar specifications for time and pressure. 10 pounds of pressure, 90 minutes. Because nowhere have I found yet, even in the ball book, where they have the one and a half pint jar time. So pints are 75 minutes for me. Um, for quarts, it's 90 minutes. This is a pint and a half, so we're going to go ahead and go with the higher number. So we're going to can these for 90 minutes. Come along and let's get started. I purchased two of these uh, five pound packages of ground beef. They're 80% lean and 20% fat. Okay, we just have our jars here sterilized. They're all clean from the dishwasher. And I put them in a little bit of water, turn the heat on just till it's steamy. Best way to clean, uh, to sterilize anything. It's the way the surgeons do it, and it's the way you should be doing it when you're canning. And if you can use one of those little steam things and clean your stove in the area around your sink, that's good too. Uh, those little alligator steamer things. Okay. Right here, I've got the, the lids going, and make sure you put in a lid, or, a lid or two extra in your water. Make sure you have plenty, and you want to bring this up to 180 degrees, a little hotter, but you don't want it to boil. You just want to see a few bubbles here in the bottom, and those need to soak for about 10 to 15 minutes minimum. Okay, now here, we've got the canner going. We've got the rack in the bottom of the canner. If you can see the line there, that's the two inch line for water. When you're going to can for 90 minutes plus 10 minutes of steaming this out the nipple here, then you want that extra water in the bottom of the canner. You don't ever want to run your canner dry. Okay, we were at Aldi's the other day and we found these flexible cutting boards. And there were several in the package. There was the chicken one, you had one for fish, one for vegetables, and we had one for beef. You can see the little picture of the cow in here. And all that I did here was I just cut out a section of it, fit it into my wide mouth jar. You can see the little cow, moo moo cow there. And what we're going to do is we're going to mark this for our height. So we'll have our height. And we're going to use this to stuff our meat down inside. Now this will keep us from getting any meat here on the ring of our jar. Okay, this is clean, it's sterile, and it's ready to go. The things you'll be needing, three cloves of garlic, smashed and chopped really, really fine. A half of a red onion, whatever you have in, on hand is fine. And you can use more if you like the onion, but be sure and chop it really fine because you want this to cook up well in the, um, in the canning process because this is going to be raw packed hamburger. And remember, we still have the 10 pounds of hamburger total. That's two pounds uh, per quart, but since we're doing pint and a half, of course, we're only going to get, um, we're gonna, we figured we should get seven, one and a half pint jars instead of the six. We'll see. Now, here is the light brown sugar. I do put a little bit of that in there since my sauce usually has it. And I'll probably put in about two or three tablespoons of it just because I like the little sweet flavor in the ketchup. We're going to be using a cup and a quarter of ketchup. We're going to be using a whole package of the premium saltine crackers. And you remember, you just take those and crush those right into the container. Um, right here is parsley flakes. We're going to use one tablespoon of parsley flakes. We're going to use one teaspoon of ground mustard. You can use uh, straight up regular mustard if you like, but here I'm using ground. We're using a teaspoon of pepper and two teaspoons of pickling or canning salt. You can adjust that to whatever you like. And we're going to be using eight eggs. You can go up to 10 eggs for this, but eight I find is plenty for, for this to make this not too hard. We want to be able to slice it for sandwiches, but you don't want to make it so hard that it, I don't know, that it tastes like a canned meatloaf. So, um, so that's our ingredients. So let's go ahead and let's get started. You want to get the largest wide Dutch oven that you can get your hands on or bowl. This is a six quart uh, saucepan and this should hold our 10 pounds of ground beef. Okay, we have our 10 pounds of hamburger. I went ahead and put this in a bigger roasting pan because I really wanted to get into this. Okay, and what I've done here is I've cracked the seven eggs into a separate container. Made sure I got out all the shells and everything out of here. Not that the shells will kill you, but who wants to bite into an eggshell? By the way, you can throw those crushed eggshells into your garden. And here, 
I've just got my onions chopped up and my two cloves of garlic uh, mixed pretty fine. Throw that in there. Make sure I get that all off. It's all yummy. And here I'm just going to put in my tablespoon of parsley. There you go. I'm going to put in a teaspoon. You know what? I'm not even going to waste my time with that. That's right there is how that's done right there. Okay, right there. That works. Okay. I'm going to put about a teaspoon of black pepper in. I don't want to put my dirty hand inside my canning salt, so I am going to just break out two teaspoons of the canning salt. Remember, the canning salt's a little stronger than regular salt, and this does not have the iodine in it. Okay, I'm going to quite put in two teaspoons of that. And then we're going to put the cracker crumbs in next. And what you want to do is you just want to squeeze that container like this. So like this. There we go. Look at that. Perfect. That's the fast way to do that right there. Get it all. And if that's not enough for you, then you can take and you can um, make sure this is done really, really good because you want, you're not really supposed to uh, can with breads unless it's done really fine, just like this. Now, if you want, you can use ground oatmeal. Make sure it's ground really fine in the food processor. Or you can use ground breadcrumbs. And again, make sure that's ground really well in the food processor. Now to this, you can see my little honey bear in there, you see? We're gonna add two heaping tablespoons. Okay, I'll go for three. Mm -mm, I love brown sugar. i brown sugar. Now we're gonna take this, make sure that's all distributed well in here. And we're going to start mixing it with our very clean washed hands. And I will be back when I'm done mixing this together. Oh my gosh, this is so much fun. This is my favorite part. Okay, so I added the seven eggs and the one and a quarter to one and a half cups of ketchup. And I think it needs some more eggs. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to add a two more eggs. This makes nine eggs for 10 pounds of hamburger. Okay. Now I'm going to dive in here with my very clean, very scrubbed hands. You can use gloves if you like. It's not necessary. This is going to get canned for 90 minutes at 10 pounds of pressure. This is going to cook off any botulism or anything that's in there. So just go ahead and dive in and use your hands. If you just had your nails done, of course, you might want to use gloves. And we're just going to mix this together. Now I'm going to need my other hand to really mix this, so we'll be right back. Okay, we've got our hot jars. We've washed our hands really good from this. And we've got our little homemade sieve piece here. We're just going to pack the jars here with our meat. We've sterilized this, and we're just going to take and kind of push that down in there. We're just going to keep dropping this in. Actually, I'm going to kind of do it by hands. And we just want to make sure that there's no air pockets in here. Down the sides. Do that really well. So there's actually room for a little bit more there. And then what we want to do is kind of compress it just a little, not a lot. A little divot in here and that will help the grease to land on top that way when you pour it off you don't have your grease all down the side here I might have that a little bit too full here I don't want to get these too full because um, there so we filled it up to about right here including the divot okay so equivalent to right here but that divot kind of brought it up the sides here just a little bit Okay, set that aside. We're going to do another one here. I like this because I can get my hand down in there to kind of help it. If you hear the saws running in the background, that's the, my framers are here. Uh, adding, doing the 
the rafters on my new office. Okay. Again, we're just going to get, oops, these out of the way. And these are hot jars, by the way. They're all sterilized and hot. We are cold packing. This is a cold pack method. And again, we're just going to get all the air bubbles out that we possibly can. See how high we fill them? And we're just going to make our divot. They're right in the top. That helps it cook a little better in the center. I'm getting the hamburger on the edges there. And we're just going to keep filling these up. And we will be right okay. back. Our lids are at 180 degrees or more. And they've soaked for at least 15 minutes. These right here are soaked for more like 25 or 30. We've got some clean napkins or paper towels to dip into our water. You can use vinegar too if you like. But it needs to be hot enough water that we can get the grease off the tops of these lids. Now this made one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this made ten one and a half pints. I actually even had enough left over for a hamburger patty for my son. So what we're going to do next is while the canner is uh, heating up, we're just going to take some very hot water and we're going to wipe these rims. And again, like I said, you can use hot vinegar as well. Just make sure that you use something that's hot and get that grease off of here. Okay, it's going to take several, so just plan on being patient. You don't want anything on there, okay? Then we're going to take a hot finger. Make sure there's no cracks or anything wrong. Add our lid. And hand tighten the bands. Okay. You can see I still got some air pockets here, but that's all right. It'll 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 shrink down. It'll be okay. And then we're going to sit this inside the can. You watch this. I can pack this by doing that. Okay, we're just going to keep going. It really helped. That actually really did a good job getting that meat to settle down just a little bit. I'm glad I thought of that on the first jar and not the last one. That's usually how I work. Again, get our finger in there. Sure, we got almost all the air pockets out. Looks good. Get that to settle. Make sure we got our little divot. Go in there like so. And finger tighten. Okay, you want to work quickly. hands I keep a soapy a bowl of water here next to me to keep my hands clean of grease that way I can do this without adding grease to my lid make sure you don't do two lids I've actually seen somebody do that before okay there we go and we're just gonna keep going okay and for these two, what we're going to do, because they won't fit into the canner, we're going to go ahead and lay, lid them, and we're going to set them aside. Okay, we just filled this up two inches with water, and then we sat in our nine pint, our nine one and a half pints, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, excuse me, eight, one and a half pints. I guess it made ten total here. I just had to set those aside. Looks like I'm going to be running the canner twice tonight. Um, I'll probably make something else and put in there that, that uh, something else with meat in it that takes uh, 90 minutes so I don't have to do a whole canner here for just two. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to crank up the heat. I'm going to yep, make sure that my nipple is clear by blowing through it. Slide on my lid here. Make sure that my canner is centered here but not touching any of my knobs because I don't want to melt any of my knobs. There we go. That's perfect. Get the heat up and we're going to let the steam flow out of this for 10 minutes. And I mean you should really feel the steam put pressure on the palm of your hand. Don't burn yourself but you should feel that. We're going to run that for 10 minutes. 
then we're going to put on a 10 pound weight and we're going to wait till that starts rocking and when that weight starts rocking back and forth then we're going to take I mean this nipple should be already be up that uh, weight should go on that should start rocking and when that starts rocking we're going to keep it rocking and we're going to adjust our heat down just until we get a nice gentle rock and we're going to process these for 90 minutes okay we have that steady steam of air that you can feel coming out you don't get too close you won't burn yourself and when it feels pretty strong there oh there it goes you want to keep your um, heat to medium high should get pretty hot you should really feel that and you want to set your time for 10 minutes okay we got a nice steam coming out the nipple popped up and now we're just going to take this, this here that's five pounds of pressure by itself but we need 10 pounds of pressure so we're going to put on one ring slip it on just like that we're going to adjust our temperature up just a little bit we want to get this rocking and then we're going to slowly bring down the temperature to where this just has a nice steady rock, rock on it to where we walk off and uh, you know it's 90 minutes of processing so you, you don't want to leave the room for very long you don't want to forget that you're doing this and you certainly don't want your children or your pets around you when you're canning you know I, I showed you that when I made the res, uh, red raspberry jam and I had my first jar explode on me in 30 years I've never had that happen and um, it was just the, bringing the heat of the jar out into the cold air conditioned room these newer homes they are they're so energy efficient that I mean my air conditioner doesn't even have to run and I've got a cool house so and today we have the windows open and the curtains are just a blowing and a beautiful 75 degree breeze it's absolutely a beautiful day out today I mean look at that just beautiful so um, I'm gonna sit here and babysit this for a little while and when it gets rocking I'll be right back nipple is up we have rocking motion and now we're just gonna go ahead and set our timer for an hour and a half that's 90 minutes and we're gonna be adjusting the temperature as we go for the probably the first two or three minutes there we go hour and 30 minutes and it is 90 minutes adjust that temperature this is the perfect rocking motion right here now if you have the pressure gauge you have to keep an eye on that because you need to be between 10 pounds and the 15 pound mark but always under the 15 pound always over the 10 pounds and remember if this ever starts rocking or if the pressure gauge ever drops below 10 pounds you have to start your timer over again so trust me if you leave the room you're gonna not gonna know if that happens okay so you just have to start the timer all over again so keep this rocking don't drop it too low too quickly okay we'll see you back here in 90 minutes is up. We're going to turn off the heat, but we are not going to touch this, and we're not going to touch the nipple to stuff either, or that one. So let's calm down for just a minute. And we're going to remove it from the heat. And we're going to pick it up on a glass top the best you can. Go. Now we're just going to bring this down from pressure naturally. It's going to take about 35 to 45 minutes. And then when this nipple drops, we can take off the weight and we can remove the meat from the inside. Or if you like, you can let it rest in there an extra 10 to 15 minutes. Okay, our nipple here has dropped and we've removed the weight. Gonna slide this open like this and when we open this we want to open this away from us that helps block that steam from hitting me in the face oh that's hot there we go see how that steam kind of comes up behind there like that let that drip here we go you can hear it sizzling so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna kind of leave it in here for just a few minutes I'm gonna give it about five ten minutes in here just to be on the safe side make sure that none of these break since the air conditioner is running because we don't want to sit this where we have a big uh, temperature difference between the heat here and the cold on the counter 
So I'm just going to kind of let this come to temperature and kind of stay in its little steamy environment for about 5-10 minutes. Okay, now we're just going to remove our meatloaf from the canner. Oops, it's already popping. I went ahead and turned off the air conditioner so it wouldn't affect that any. Okay. And we're just going to continue to remove these if I can get my little thing around them. There we go. That's perfect. And we'll be back in just a moment. Okay, I just pulled these out of the canner and they've all already popped and sealed, either in the canner or here as I was carrying them over. So that only took a few minutes. <laughs> So they've all sealed and I'm really happy with that. We'll check them again in 24 hours when we label them and remove the rings. But I hope you've enjoyed coming along for the ride today and I hope this has inspired you to go out and to can some meatloaf. This is Chef Janie Pendleton. Blessings and enjoy. So I hope you've enjoyed canning ground beef with me and the, the series of ground beef series that we've been doing this week, from the Swedish meatballs to the meatloaf that we made today. Um, I'm just really excited. I've got lots of great foods that I can just come home from work, come in off the construction site. You can already see I've got the farmer's tan here going this year already. From um, either being out in the garden, on the construction sites, or just from being in a really hot uh, kitchen where I've been chefing. So uh, to squeeze these videos in on my time is very precious. But I really like bringing them to you and I've had a lot of requests and meatloaf is one of the requests that I do my meatloaf. I just have a lot of people who, uh, who request my meatloaf. Meatloaf sandwiches, oh my gosh, heaven, especially on a big slice of homemade uh, bread. So, um, and maybe I'll post that bread recipe for you later as well. But I hope that this has inspired you to come along and join me for the ride on the next video where we're going to be making some more jams. So. I'll see you next time. Behave, because I'm watching you. I got mine. Yes, I do. I do.